um, as you have in the title, uh, the meaning of Ar-Rahmah, which is mercy, in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, most gracious, uh, gracious, most merciful. And uh, this is a continuation to uh, what I was saying last time in, in terms of the meaning of Alhamd. And uh, hopefully, inshallah, I'll be going through Surah Al-Fatiha, inshallah, um, uh, to understand uh, Surah Al-Fatiha properly. Because by understanding it, inshallah, we understand the purpose and the meaning of uh, or the summary of the Quran, inshallah. And uh, tonight, inshallah, we'll be knocking on a door of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, which is the door of mercy. And again, going through the basira, which is the insight, and trying to implement this tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, which is the heart, to see into the light of, of the Quran and into the meaning of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, by the Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, <laughs> and these three verses are, as, um, as I'm recapping from what I spoke about last time, is <coughs> um, these three verses are a conversation. Well, mainly the first, three ver- the first three verses is a conversation between the servant to the whole Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, in fact, is a conversation between the servant, uh, the person who is praying, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because we said that's alhamd, which is uh, praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we detailed in that that praise involves gratitude, which is shukr, thanks, giving thanks, and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. But for the sake of the language, we only say praise. Uh, we said that Alhamd, the praise that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it in our prayers, as well as in our uh, own time when we are by ourselves, not in the form of ibadah as we know it, means salat, because you are in a ibadah even if you are not in the salat. It can be ibadah in your dhikr, it can be in your ibadah in your at home, with your dealings, with your family, with people, with co co-workers. You can be in ibadah at work. You can be in ibadah in your term of in your education. So as long as you intend that something is to serve Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and inshallah that will be as a form of ibadah. And um, <coughs> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described Himself with two names of His names, uh, the the beautiful names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and two of His attributes by saying Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And they are uh, from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the lights of the lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the Surah An-Nur, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are lights with which we guide ourselves, inshallah, uh, in this dunya and until we reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. And uh, ar-rahma, which is mercy, from the word rahima, and we know that this word is re- repeated a lot in the Quran, is mentioned a lot in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the word ar-rahma, and the root word of this word is ra and ha and mim, rahma, and the um, this door of mercy is the first and the greatest, one of the greatest doors that when the person knocks on it, it will be opened for them. If the person knocks the door of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, it will be open to him. And if the person turns away from this door, it will be called upon them then it will be called upon them. Then it will be called upon them. And if they don't listen, then regret will be upon those, those people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. What a regret. By here in this surah, 
in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not talk about, he's, Allah does not regret things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relating the, the situation or the consequence of the story that when somebody has been called upon for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he turns away from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings with mercy and created them with mercy and provided for them with mercy and guided them to his mercy. And he asked from his servants, the believers, to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, to seek his mercy out of mercy for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, is asking us to worship him for our benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what's good for us. And this is the reason why the human being has a choice. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the choice to make for ourselves, for no person has the right to blame any person except themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَدَيْنَاهُ najadain." So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, guided, we gave the person the, 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 the right to choose. You can choose whatever you want. You can choose the good and you get, uh, uh, you can, you, and you get rewarded for it. And you can choose the, the wrong and you get a, a wizard or recompense for that. So the person has that choice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of his mercy, wanted us, wanted us to obey him so we can get his reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ Allah doesn't want to punish us. So if you, gratitude, you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have any benefit to punish his, his, his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we have that choice to make. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened and widened the door of mercy upon his servants, those who are grateful and show gratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them the easy way. And those who rejected the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still calls them to his mercy, with his mercy for their own benefit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it for any human being difficult or made it, made it difficult for them to return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not want the human being to despair from his mercy. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says relating the story of Ya'qub alayhi salam when he told his children to go and look for Yusuf alayhi salam. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So despair is not uh, something that the Muslim should have, or for that matter, any human being, but in particular, the believer who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not have any despair. And the door of mercy is open for the believer, for the human being, until death reaches his throat, or until the sun rises from, from the West. And this is a great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the human being. And it's a, it's, it's a lifetime span. And that lifetime can run from 20 to 30 to 70, so the, the length of the human being's life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has opened that door and widened it wanting people to go through the gate. Because again, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's given you that choice. And it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's provided you the chance. And it's from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us respite. Allah has given us respite. Because some of us will err, will make mistakes, then we'll go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that chance for the human being to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over there. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, relating in the hadith al-Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي سَبَقَتْ غَضَبِي That my mercy 
has preceded my anger. That the, the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come before his mercy. And that shows that the mercy is being given first out of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his servant. And the rahmah is sabiqa lil adab. The, the sabiqa comes before the adab. And uh, the adab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not come except that there is a mercy that preceded it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا And we were not punishing any people, any tribe, anybody, until we send a messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends warnings for us before, or for, or for human beings generally, before his punishment comes following his mercy. And the Rasul, the messenger, is the Rahmah. And the person who strays from the, the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goes astray, and the person who disbelieves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pulls him back, pulls him back to him with mercy. And some of the scholars gave a similitude to this situation by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing back people to him, it might look outwardly a bit harsh. But if you uh, analyze and internalize the, the wisdom behind it, you will understand the purpose. The example of the, the shepherd, and we mentioned this example before, is like when you are a shepherd and you have a flock of sheep. If the one sheep goes stray from the flock, you chuck a stone or, or a stick on it. It might hurt the sheep, but that's half mercy that the wolf doesn't eat it. So outwardly you look that in the life of the human being in general and the life of the believer in particular, that there are certain stones and certain sticks that are thrown for us or on us, for us to bring us to come back to the flock, our fear that the wolf will eat from us. So the example of these sticks and stones is like what afflicts the Muslim and the believer and the human being. And the, these slaps, if you want to call it like that, these slaps, because that's the translation of the word Arabic latamat, this latamat is little slaps, little smacks that touches the human being from Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim is for his benefit. So whenever we reflect on the word Ar-Rahman or the two words Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, we increase in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this mahabba, this love, is a door that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for his worship and the way that leads to sincerity. And sincerity is ikhlas. Because the only way you're going to be sincere in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by loving him. And the only way to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mainly, when mainly, you have to recognize the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And when you, are, when you are in a state of ikhlas, there are two types. There's a person who is a mukhlis. You are sincere when you do acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, 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 the level higher than that is al-mukhlas. Al-mukhlas is somebody that has, that has been made to be sincere, means it was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Yusuf alayhi salam, innahu min ibadina al-mukhlasin. Verily, he is from our servants, the chosen ones. So the, the more you are sincere, in your deeds, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until, until you become chosen. And uh, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a mere claim that a person can claim just like that. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody can make a claim like that. But this claim should be materialized in terms of the action. 
For example, if somebody says, I love my child, that's, that's understood, that's simple. You don't have a problem taking that. You say, I love my child, I love my wife, I love my husband. Alhamdulillah, that's understood. Why? Because that's in the fitr of the human being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed us with is what he said in the Quran, Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahawat. It was made uh, beautiful for mankind, the love of shahawat, the adornments of life. And Allah gave example, hubbu shahawat min al nisa your wives, well, Benin and children. So all these things that have been made in the shahwa, in the gariza, in the instinct of the human being, it's understood, it's in your fitrah, it's in your default, in your aboriginal nature. But for you to make a claim that I really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to fulfill certain criteria or criteria for you to make a claim like that. Um, if you want to ask yourself, for example, about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you really feel it in, in your heart? Do we feel the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it something that we only claim? Because feeling <coughs> is not what you say. And we said last time that for an act, it has to be verbal and practical at the level of the limbs and something in the heart. So. For that thing in the heart to be there, that is the highest level, is to be there. Because a person can say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He can pray, but he might not be sincere. But if a person says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and that originated from his heart on the basis of sincerity, his actions, which his deeds, the arkan that he would do, will be based on sincerity. So the same thing when we say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to show that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in action. It's not with what we say, but with our actions. And the, the, the test for that, and this is a test for all of us, if you want to know whether you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not, is to see how you are in terms of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find yourself that you are in places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you not to be, or you're doing certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you not to do, there's a question mark about your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there's a question mark about your love, about the claim you've made. So all of us, we have shortcomings, except a chosen, group that we mentioned earlier on that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke and when he said mukhlasin innahu min ibadina al-mukhlasin those people they are for sure in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ those who, uh, the, uh, those who believe here means that they believe sincerely. They love Allah most because the, the siyaq, the, um, the context uh, uh, that this ayah came in is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about some people وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ And from people that take, besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that need like equals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they love them the same love, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is shirk. When you love something at the level you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا But those who believe, أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most. So those people are chosen ones. And we know them, alhamdulillah. We have no doubt of their love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst them, the, believe, the, the prophets and the messengers. And then amongst them, the sahaba that were with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention in the Quran about them. 
لقد رضي الله عن المؤمنين إذ يبايعونك تحت الشجرة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with the believers who gave pledge to you under the tree. So there are certain groups that we know by evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that they were in sincere love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most and more than anything else. But in, for my condition and your condition, the condition of a lot of people, and inshallah amongst us, there are people who love, who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those people. But if you find yourself that you are in a place that does not reflect the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to check yourself. It's the same, the relationship. There is a good relationship between a son and a father or a mother and a daughter, or vice versa, and a daughter and a father, or a son and a mother. And there's a sincere, real relationship between these two. Then the child, he does not want to be seen in a position where his father or his mother would see them in. Not our fear, but our love, our haya, our of being shy. So if you love somebody, you're shy to be in a place or to see or to, 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 to do something or to, to let them see you somewhere that is, is not deserving to the relationship you have with them. So this is, the fear is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخَافُونِي Fear me. But better than that, Fear has to come with something else, which is the haya, the shyness that we should have in, uh, in Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this shyness emanates only from the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the same thing if you love a person, you never want them to see you in a vulnerable position, in an uh, undesirable position. So you want always the person to see you because you, you value that person, you respect them, you love them, you don't want to hurt their feelings, you don't want to hurt them, you don't want to break their hearts, you don't want to do something that dismays them. More likely, that should be our condition when we are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to check ourselves for us. It is, this is, it is, this is, it's not a challenge, but this is a process. This is something that we need to keep checking and working on throughout our lives to better, better ourselves on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this haya is, is, is recommended, the shyness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recommended. As well, that the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recommended because we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as he described himself. That he is Al Jabba, the compeller, Al Qahar, the Tawl, Shadid Al Iqab. Allah is severe in punishment. But on the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ghafur al Rahim, most merciful, most forgiving, and most merciful. So the fear, uh, the, the mercy, and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes before the, uh, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the lights or the merciful lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in certain names, of, uh, the names of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are prayer or come prior to his, uh, uh, his, his power and might and punishment. So uh, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said in the, uh, giving us a, a, an example to the condition of the believer is that the believer continues to travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way the, the bird is, is flying with his two birds a, one bird uh, one, one wing with the two wings uh, the bird is flying with two wings a wing of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but a wing is a representation of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the person, the believer is flying 
and move into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a balanced walk and uh, with a balanced fly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our fear and hope, our hope and fear. The walk of this person is balanced to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he continues to say, until the person approaches death, <clears throat> then he gives preference to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He brings forward and forth the, the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the person, he, that's what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, Hatta idha ra'a ma ra'a. Hatta idha ra'a ma yara. The person who's coming to death, in terms of seeing angels, when the person reaches the, the end of his life and he sees means he sees certain things that are not from this world and we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hatta idha balagat al wa antum wa antum hina idin tanzurun wa nahnu aqrabu ilayhi minkum walakin la tubsirun so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we are closer to that person who is dying and uh, here we know from the hadith that when the person is dying, he sees the angel of death and he sees the angels with him, either the angels of mercy or the angels of punishment. So when the person sees that, then he brings forth the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith, Al-Qudsi, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I'm at the expectation of my servant he has in me. So you have to have a good expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're approaching death. And when you have that expectation, if you have a good expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you bring forth and you think khair, good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take your soul with ease. But this done, this expectation, it's not something that you can work on overnight because it's not an action. It's not a fi'l. It's an ihsas, it's a feeling. So uh, if you say, for example, if I say, for example, tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to uh, fast, or tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to get up, or tonight I'm going to do some night prayer, or tomorrow I'm going to do this or that, that's, that's, that's feasible, that's, that's understandable. But for you, if you say to yourself, tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to love Allah, bi'idnillah. Tomorrow, from next year, inshallah, I'm going to be a person who loves Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not work like that. Because love is something that is it's a feeling. It's not an action. And because it's a feeling, it's not earned. But it's, it's given. It's mawhub. It's a hiba. It's a gift from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for example, if you're happy, you cannot say to yourself, I want to stop being happy and be sad. Because feelings, they are not controlled by you. It's something, it's something that comes to you. Yes, there are certain things you do for you to reach a certain status. But when something comes to you, for example, sometimes you can just, you don't know, you're depressed. It might be a reason for your depression. It might be a reason why you're feeling down. You might be something that caused that. But once you are in the status of depression or state of depression, you cannot unwind, uh, just get out of that situation and replace it with something else. No, it's very difficult. You can't do that. Same thing if, you are, if you're happy and you're in a good mood, very unlikely that you can switch to an opposite mood. So this is why we're saying that the things to do with feelings, things to do with emotions, things to do with the ahasis, things that you find in terms of your uh, atifa, for example, your emotion and your, uh, uh, the love you have for something or the state of, state of mind. In English, we say state of, state of mind, but that's a state of heart because the heart is, is, is very powerful and the heart controls the mind. As Muslims, we should believe that the heart, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the heart uh, in the Quran a lot, because the heart is the source of cognition and the source of uh, uh, good judgment. And uh, 
because we said that if you are in that state of mood, you cannot change it to another state. It means that the state of love is something that we have to work on. Because when it comes to feelings, you are an object. When it comes to actions, you're the subject. For example, when you do something, you're the subject, you're the doer. But when you have a state of mood, or state of heart, or state of mind, is something that has been done to you. So anything to do with the heart, anything to do with feelings, for example, happiness, sadness, fear, for example, and what we're talking about, love. It's not your decision. For example, you love someone. You can't get yourself out of that state. If you love someone, you love them. Yes, after a while, that love may change. But once you love someone, you love them. You cannot say, oh, you put your finger in it, I love this person because of that. Sometimes you love someone you don't even know. You like a person, for example. You come to the masjid, you see a person, he sees you. You like them. You don't know them very well, but you like them. And because we know, as the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْأَرْوَاحَ جُنُودٌ مُجَنَّدًا مَا تَعَارَفَ مِنْهَا اَتَلَفْ وَمَا تَنَاكَرَ مِنْهَا اَخْتَلَفْ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Verily the souls are like an armies. Sometimes you come to a gathering, you meet someone for the first time, and you think, subhanAllah, as if I've known this person for years. How come? How, what, what happened? It's not, in, it's not to do with you, it's to do with your heart, it's your soul. Well, sometimes you meet someone for the first time, you don't like them. There's nothing, you've, they've done nothing to you. You've seen nothing wrong with them. You haven't experienced anything wrong from them. Yet, you don't like that person, you don't get on with them. You said, me and that person, I don't think we're compatible. That's, that's the heart. That's, and, and the heart is, is, is related to the soul. So the work of the heart is not in our hands. It's, something, it's not your decision. You don't decide in that. It's outside your control. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Verily, the people who love Allah, uh, the, the believers, they love Allah most. Allah is talking here, subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, about something that those people, they've witnessed, not only with their eyes, but something that they felt. In Arabic, it's called al-wujd. Al-wujd means something you found. But it's not something that is physical. It's spiritual. So when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something takes place in your heart that you find the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the love I'm talking about. So when a person says, uh, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should not say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like that, a mere claim. But we need to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the heart. It means that when you say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have feelings in your heart. The same as we said when you say, Alhamdulillah. When you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you need to feel it. You have that feeling in your heart that your heart will beat with, with, the, with the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing when you say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your heart should beat with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's, that's a high level. But inshallah, uh, hope amongst us there are people like that. And we hope, inshallah, we all aspire to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala practically, with our spirit, with our heart, before we say it with our tongues. And sometimes you say it or you don't say it, it shows in your actions. It's like when you love your wife or you love your husband. Some husbands don't say, I love you, darling, sweetheart, and all these terms. But you can see, it in the, you can see that in their actions, even though they should to pro pro proclaim it. It's be good if the person says it. That's a reassurance to the other person. But sometimes some people, they say, I love you all the time, but you don't see it in their action. And that's weak. Like when the person says to you, don't smoke, and he smokes, that's it. That's a problem. But that's the thing. If the person loves you, you feel it. 
it's not you you don't know it you don't you feel it you see it in their actions the same thing when and better than that walillahi al a'la if we say we love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to show that in action and that action should be based on the heart because a person can fake and can be hypocritical in their action but inshallah we're not talking about those people we're talking about people who, sh- who are sincere in their actions with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. but what those people uh, have achieved in terms of uh, the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is i said was as was said is something they found they touched spiritually they touched something that touched their hearts that inclined them towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so but there are certain things you can do for you uh, we said that the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a gift it's a ni'mah it's a blessing but you can work towards it with doing certain things is first by knowing his names and his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to know the meaning of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes. So when you say, and on top of those names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So when you say Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, you are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not crea- created any creation except with mercy. And he has not provided any provision except with mercy. And he hasn't done any deed except with mercy. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants. He loves his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored children of Adam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, children of Adam here, Bani Adam, and Adam alayhi salam, he's himself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him, he made the angels bow to him. That's a sign of honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Adam alayhi salam. So the creation of Adam alayhi salam is an honor to us. And it's even better an honor to those amongst us who are believers. Inshallah, later on, I was soon I'm going to state that son of Adam, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until a point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servants before they go wrong, before they do wrong before they transgress, before they disbelieve. So up to this point, human beings, before they do the wrong, they are on the fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them upon. And the fitrah is Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitrah. Every newborn is born on the fitrah, the aboriginal nature. Then the, 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 the the, the, the default and the, the original and the original nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with created us with is Islam, is, is innocence, is purity before you indulge in the haram and do the wrong. And that's why before the person reaches puberty, there are no, are no writing, their angels are not writing anything for them until they reach puberty. So until that time, we are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then, so when people recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his good deeds, his actions, and his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will divide into two parts. One part, they recognize the gratitude, the good deeds, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they worship him. This is the first group. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those. Those who knew and realized and got to a, a, real, a realization that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them, provided them, gave them life, gave them whatever they have. So how do we say thank you? Is by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other group, 
are people who realized this. But they said, no, we don't believe in God. God they didn't do anything. There is no God, in fact. These people, they يَسْتَوْجِبُونَ عَذَابَ Allah. I mean, they become deserving to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for denying his blessings. So when the person denies, and this is one of the meanings of kufr, uh, a lot of people misunderstand when they say a kafir, it's like an insult, but a kafir is, is, is linguistically means somebody who denies or somebody who hides. And we said before in many instances, Allah, the, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says in the Quran, like a, the similitude of a rain that the kuffar here that the, the kuffar uh, are happy with its fruits the kuffar here means the farmers or the people who work work on the land so a, a kafir is a farmer why because he puts the seed in the ground so when you hide the seed in the ground you're a kafir linguistically so when the person we say a kafir is somebody who hides something and the kafir is a person who hides the bounties and the gratitude and the, the or the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah has given you life and he's saying god doesn't exist allah has created you and said i was born through the big bang or whatever allah has created you from adam and he said like you know i mean it was evolution even regardless to what people believe so when the person denies denies when he, they deny allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they become deserving to his punishment but his punishment again does not come there and then inna allah yumhilu wa la yuhmil allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you respite but he does not ignore so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and gives the human being, good and bad, a chance. And it's a long chance, as I mentioned before. It's, it's a lifespan. And he gives you that chance for you perhaps to come back, perhaps for, perhaps for you to come back to the acknowledgement that, no, yes, I, I, I deserve, or I am required to show like a gratitude for my creation. To, to the one who gave me life. So that attitude is, alhamdulillah, is acceptable and it's good from the believer who is astray, who is in, indulging in the wrong, indulging in the haram, doing things he's not supposed to be doing. That person should say to themselves, no, it's wrong. I'm not paying back as I was given. And that's, that person is all of us. All of us, we are in shortcomings, but as long as we have this realization that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves better, Allah deserves better, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves better than the deeds we do. And that's why in the dua, like, you know what I mean? The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming down to us and our sins are going up to him. And that's not fair. And that goes for all of us. But, so, but as long as you have this comp contemplation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down his mercy upon us, but us is sending up our wrong deeds to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal us all. This is on the side of the believer. On the side of the non-believer is the same thing, because the signs before the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, the signs are there, and the signs are for the believers and for the non-believers. So whatever afflicts and whatever befalls human beings in terms of the afflictions and the um, uh, atrocities, the adversities in life, those are signs that we can be seen with the eye and can be read with the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ How many signs 
within the heavens and the earth. They go past them, but they are in, ne in negligence. They are not in attend. They are not paying attention. So there are signs before the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala comes. So we need to learn to read the signs around us. So whenever something happens, we should stop and reflect. What's that? What's this message? Is it is it is it is it intending me? Is it because of my deeds? Is it with the situation? So we need to start reading the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation. And we are his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the, 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 because, because worship with, with sight, or with insight, when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with insight, you have a better understanding. Because the... The, 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 the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not come except from experience. Experience. Something that, that we know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he said uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ Oh Allah, show me how do you give life to the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him what? He told him, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ haven't you believed? Ibrahim السلام, said, Bala, verily, I believe, but for my heart to be in tranquility. So Ibrahim السلام, wanted to see something with his eyes because it would strengthen his iman. Even though, that, it doesn't mean that Ibrahim السلام, did not believe until, but Ibrahim السلام, wants, that's called ilm al yaqeen, ayn al yaqeen. Because the levels of Iman are, de are different. There are different levels of Iman. So, but the point here I'm trying to make is that when you see something with your own eyes, that will strengthen your position or your judgment or your understanding. So, but when you do that with your own eyes, you will see what? Well, you will see the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy. You will see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you really reflect into what's happening, what's taking place around you, you can't help except that to get to the realization that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enshrouding you. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all around us. So the universe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in, 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 in perfect tune in perfect tuning from the big things to the small things so the big things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with it with his word ar-rahman and the little things that you cannot see with the eye Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with it with ar-rahim so what's left nothing so everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dealt with small or big with his mercy. And this mercy is what we need to feel when we say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Because our existence, our creation, then our existence, there and then our life, our risk, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his inayah, his protection, his, his rahmah, his shifa, his healing, his love, all these words, we cannot live without that. We cannot. Every time you say Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, you have to reflect why Allah is merciful. Where is the mercy of Allah? The mercy of Allah is here, is in, is in his risk, it is in his creation. And then after he created you, he guided you. I mean, creation comes prior to guidance. But Hidayah is greater than creation. Because many people are created as well, but they have not been given, or they have not been given the tawfiq, the success, to get to the Hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to wake up guided. Like that's why the dua, when you say in the morning, you wake up, Alhamdulillah, illadi ahiyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushu, and you keep saying, there's a lot of dua to say, and then you say, وَعَلَى مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wake up on the Milla of Ibrahim, on the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and on the Milla of Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam. That's a great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To wake up, recognizing that Allah has brought you back from life, as we said before, He created you, He gave you a chance by waking you up from sleep, and then waking you up as a Muslim, as a believer, as a person who recognizes the bounties and the, grat and, 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 and the graciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why you say, Alhamdulillah. So whoever wants to see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should look at the mother. The mother in everything is, is the example of mercy. The mother, if you look at the world of, of human beings or the beasts, the animals, or the fish, like the mammals in the sea, or the birds, the mercy is displayed to its best. When you see a mother and a baby or, or uh, an animal, a uh, chick with, the, for example, uh, an, uh, a bird, the, the, even when you look, uh, if you look at the crocodile, how big, how strong that beast is, the way it carries the eggs from the, uh, from, from, from the shore of the, of the sea, to, from the nest to, to the water, is unbelievable display of mercy. And how the animal raises or lifts its foot, its hoof, not to crush the baby. Or the mother who just given birth to the baby. It could be after a cesarean. It could be after an, um, a, a hard uh, labor. But as soon as the baby cries, he's up there. Who gave the mother this ability to be like that? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this mercy that the mother has, it's not hers. It's given to her by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not hers. This is a ariya. This is a loan. And because it's a loan, and it's musta'ara, means it's, 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 it just, you borrowed it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's given to you. So all the, it's the same as a, a mirror, when you look at a mirror. You look at the mirror, and the, the, you put a mirror in a, in, a, in a particular position, it reflects the sun, or the, the, the light of the sun. The light is not coming from the mirror, but it's coming from the sun. The mirror is only a reflection to the light in this, of the sun. Similarly, the mercy that we see in the mother, the mercy that we see amongst human beings, the mercy that we see in humanity, the mercy that we see in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are mere reflections of the real reflection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. That the, me, that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, the, that in the hadith that the mercy that we live with in this dunya is one of a hundredth of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the 99 hundredths of that mercy will be on the day of judgment. So that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever you say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you have to ponder on this. So without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the word or the name Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, this universe cannot last even a twinkle of an eye. Well, for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he praised himself. And he said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Why? Because he is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said last time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised himself before he told us to praise him. He said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillahi Rabb. He is the Lord. All, world, all, all, the, all the worlds. Why? Because all these world, the worlds cannot survive, cannot exist without him being Rahman and Rahim. Merciful, most merciful, most gracious. So when you say Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, 
this name, these two names are, cre are have a connection with our creation, with our khalq. When our creation is related to Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, and to display this in one of the battles, from the battles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I think it's Ghazwat Badr, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a woman from amongst the prisoners of war. Uh, she saw, he saw this woman, whenever she hears one of the children of, the Muslim, of, the, of, of her tribe, the captives, they were from Quraysh, from, from the Mushrikeen. Whenever she hears one of the children crying, the babies or toddlers, when she hears somebody crying, one of the children, she rushes to them, she holds them and she gives them the breast, talking about the babies. When she gives him the breast until he goes quiet, then she, she, she goes to another one. And she keeps doing that. And the Sahaba were looking at that scene, amazed of the mercy of this woman. So the Prophet وسلم, wanted to teach them a lesson in Tawheed, a practical Tawheed, not Tawheed that is verbal, but it's a practical Tawheed. He pulled their attention to something that they were thinking of one thing, Subhanallah, this woman is very merciful. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, wanted to take them a step higher than that. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Lallahu, verily Allah, Arhamu bi'ibadi, most merciful, more merciful with his servants, slaves, than that woman. So he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took their attention to this mercy that this woman is displaying is not hers. It has a source. It has, it has been given by someone. It has come from someone else. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because had Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he would have taken that mercy from that woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take the mercy from the most merciful person on this planet. What's the consequence? There is an, the consequence is an ayah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْلَمُوا verily know أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets between the person and his heart. Imagine, الْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ that you and your hearts are not in, in, in accordance. And that's a punishment. That's a severe punishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets between the person and his heart. So what does it mean? It means that the, the humanity, the atifa, the affection, the rahmah, the mercy that is in the human being, it gets taken away from them. So when you take away the mercy from the human being, he is not a human being anymore. That's why we use the term humane. That's not humane. That's not from the characteristic of this creature, the, the mankind. When you see some people doing certain things. Hello? Uh, so when you see somebody doing something like this, like killing or torturing or this, uh, doing some atrocities to a human being or to a baby or to an animal that does not settle right with you, why? Because it goes against the fitrah. So the moment Allah subhanahu, when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this to the person? Is when the person is called with mercy and called with mercy and called with mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps calling this person with mercy and the person is not replying, is not complying, is denying and rejecting and defying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah takes away from him that mercy that he has endowed him with. So when you take away that mercy from that person, that you have taken something from his fitrah, the way Allah created him, Allah took away from him what he has endowed him with, which is his rahmah. So that person becomes a piece of iron, no mercy. He becomes all evil. No khair in them. And eventually, they become more deserving to the punishment and the hell of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rahmah is not from you. Rahmah is not from you. But it, so if, if mercy comes to you, 
If mercy comes to you, know that it's not from you. And if you display mercy, know that it's not from you. And many people, they think, oh, oh, mashallah, I'm very merciful, I'm very kind. To do. It's not from you. You did not work for it. You did not achieve a level for you to deserve it. You did not go to the supermarket and, um, um, and buy it. You did not do any of these. It was you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you with it and endowed you with it. That's why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he saw the Sahabi, and we mentioned the story again before, and he said to him, verily you have in you two characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger love. Al-hilmu wal-anat. He said, Ya Rasulullah, al-hilm is, is forbearance and anat is patience. He said to him, Ya Rasulullah, are they two characteristics that I've worked on, that I've achieved, I've acquired, or are they characteristics that I jubilto alayhim, that I was, I, was, I was endowed with? He said, no, there are two characteristics that you were endowed with. He said, alhamdulillah, alladhi jabalani, ala khislatayn yuhibbuhum Allahu wa rasooluh. Alhamdulillah, first thing he said, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed me with two characteristics that he subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger love. It means that this person realized that it's not from my own work. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to understand that every good deed, any display of mercy from your behalf, it's not from you. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So realizing this, and realizing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to understand that this is the way, and this, these are the means we need to seek to get to the, to, to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is an experiment, is a tajriba, is a, is a test. Sometimes in it there is hardship, but the end becomes mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated that twice. Verily, with hardship comes ease. Verily, with hardship comes ease. Verily, inna ma'al usri yusra. Verily, with hardship comes ease. In, verily, with ease. Uh, inna ma'al usri yusra. Verily, with hardship comes ease. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated that twice. And there are a lot of understandings that we were taught at school that maybe we did not learn them properly, but through experience, you, you change your understanding. For example, the love of the country. You know what I mean? The love of your country. Maybe you never understood what does it mean. But if you go abroad and you go to a land that you don't know, you start missing that country that you never appreciated. And within your family, your brothers and your sisters, your siblings, even your parents sometimes, or the parents with their children. And I'm here I'm talking mainly about the children not appreciating their parents. Or a brother doesn't like a sister, or brother doesn't like a brother. When do you realize that you really love that person is when that person is not with you anymore. So through the hardship, you come to the realization that has shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your heart will, will become lenient to understand certain things. You can't, you can be falling out with your brother or your sister. If something wrong happens to them, they end up in hospital, whatever. SubhanAllah, you realize that oh, SubhanAllah, your heart is moving. Why? So that feeling is the feeling of mercy. That's a display of mercy. And that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to start walking and making our way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to find his mercy, to find his love. So love and mercy, they are related. But how do you get to them? Is by getting nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to get near. You have to walk towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to be carrying the flag or carrying the emblem or carrying the, some, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. Carry it to yourself, carry it to your spouse, carry it to your children, 
carry it to your community, carry it to the society, do whatever you can with your ability to spread what you think is good, to spread the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to show mercy. And we said before, and I repeat it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, radiyallahu anhum wa radu anh. Allah was pleased with them, and they were pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say, I'm pleased, you are saying, I'm happy, I love, I recognize the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a dua that we say in the morning, adhkar, raditu billahi rabba, wa bil islami deena, wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nabiyyam wa rasoola in another narration, nabiyya. So I'm pleased with Allah as a Lord. And with Islam as a deen, as a, as a way of life, as a religion, and with Muhammad as a prophet and a messenger. When you say that, and there is a story, this was mentioned, is that Umar radiallahu anhu went with the Sahaba. It was the Prophet some, some, some of the people asking him certain question, questions, they upset him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this man, because he lost his camel, and he came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Aina Naqati, where is my camel? And the Prophet Sallallahu being uh, this person, like being sarcastic and teasing the Prophet Sallallahu to, to, to test his prophethood, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu got angry, and people start asking, and he got upset, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he starts saying, Saluni, Saluni, ask me, ask me. And a man stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Aina Maqami, where is my position? He said to him, Finnar, in hellfire. So the Prophet ﷺ being angered like that, and Umar radiallahu an, realizing that the Prophet ﷺ getting upset, he went and he went on his knees and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Radina Billahi Rabba, wa bil Islam Dina, wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa Rasul. So Umar radiallahu an saying that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Allah says in the Quran, Sakata Anhul Ghadab. The same way, Sakata Anhul Ghadab, the Ghadab, the anger disappeared or calmed down. He calmed down Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the anger like cooled down. The same way the anger cooled down on Musa Alayhi Salam. Because we know from the story of Musa when he came back and he found his people worshipping the calf. He, he chucked the tablets and he started holding to the hair and beard of his brother Harun alayhi salam. But when he got calm and he calmed down from his anger, he picked up the tablets and we know the story. So the same thing when Umar radiallahu anh said that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calmed down. And when he calmed down, he calmed down Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he understood what Umar radiallahu anh said. Radina, we're pleased with Allah and we're pleased with Islam and we're pleased with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's a sign of love. So to bring, to get this love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to understand, to get it, is by understanding His mercy. And by understanding His mercy, Sallallahu Alaihi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we said we need to get close. And the way, and from one of the ways, and the main ways to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through dua. To invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to be stingy in our dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my servants ask you about me, verily I'm near. This is a display of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is telling you, I'm near, just invoke me. And when, from experience and from history, we know that people who invoked Allah, not even Muslims, not even believers in, in dire situations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies to their invocation, their dua. Condition, sincerity. When you're sincere in your dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ I reply and I answer the dua of the person if they call me. What we said with one condition is sincerity. And the person should not 
be tempted by the shaitan and misled by the shaitan to have despair in his dua by saying, oh, I make dua, I made dua all the time and this, this situation never changed. This is from the steps, from, this is from Talbis of Iblis. This is from the shaitan's deception. You make dua for sure, if you're sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies to it. Whether in the dunya or the hereafter. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wards some evil with that dua that you've made. So in all conditions, your dua will be replied to, inshallah, with one condition, as we said, sincerity. And another one is as long as there is no impediments. Impediments means things that prevent the dua from reaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know from the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said that the person traveling, ash'atha aghbar, disheveled, dusty, he, lifting his hands to the sky, saying, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, O oh Allah, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامُ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامُ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامُ So if somebody eats haram and drinks haram and wears haram, don't expect to raise your hands and Allah will reply to you. That's an impediment. He said, sincerity, an impediment. This is, there should be no things that prevent the dua. So inshallah, to wrap up, the dua is the mean of seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah says in the Quran, My mercy has encompassed everything. And كل شيء, every means every. Everything has the mercy of Allah. So, and what with us runs away, runs out, and what with Allah is always there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma indakum yanfad wa ma indallahi baq. What with, what's with you? We'll come to, to, to finish. We'll come to an end. We'll cease. Wa ma indallahi baq. What, what's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everlasting. All we have to do is to knock on the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we knock on this door, definitely will be open for us if we are sincere inshallah and uh, as, as a conclusion to what i've been saying is everything that we see from what happens to us good or bad these are signs of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it's good from the outside and good from the inside alhamdulillah it's a mercy but sometimes it might be a, a hard or harsh from the outside, but still it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, ta the same way you take the medicine, it's bitter, but it does the job. It brings the healing, inshallah, as a means from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand the sweetness of the, what's happening and the bitterness of what's happening. And by understanding this, our taste will change. Our hearts, will change and next time we'll read ar-rahman ar-rahim inshallah our hearts will beat with the recognition and the realization of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we read alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-rahman ar-rahim so far inshallah we have this understanding of the alhamd and this understanding of ar-rahman ar-rahim and if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a chance Next time, we go to Maliki Yawmuddin to bring, to uh, get the dots, to bring the dots together. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his mercy and to make us worship him with gratitude, with hamd and mercy from our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa a'ala wa a'alam. Subhanaka Allah wa bihamdu. Shadu Allah wa ilayla. استغفرك واتوب لك جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله بارك الله فيك شاك فيك بارك الله over to the uh, the people now you can ask your question if you have any uh, <coughs> or you can put it in the chat if you want to um, is there anyone that wants to ask a question to Shaq on the topic that you just discovered I've seen a uh, hand up here, Samia. Samia. 
Hey, salam alaikum. Uh, Samia, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Um you Sheikh, you mentioned about the Rahma, ninety-nine Rahma um in um in um the Akhriya. No. Um so are you saying my understanding are you saying only one percent is given here in the dunya and the ninety nine percent is gonna give in the Akhriya? That's right, that's exactly what the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, reflects. And that Rahma that Rahma will be given depends on your deeds, is it? Is it, is no, it the rahma, uh, the, the, the hadith here of the, the hereafter, it just it shows that the full mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be displayed in the hereafter until in the hadith the Prophet wasallam said even the shaitan will hope, will have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for the shaitan to feel, to think, or to start feeling or thinking that the, the mercy of Allah will reach him, that shows like the extent of the Rahmah. Okay, thank you. Barakallah, fix it. Yeah, uh, Sister Sia, can you unmute yourself? Javi, <laughs> mashallah. Sister Sia? Can she hear us? I don't, uh, I'm not sure. Us? There's there's another hand up. Uh, I am. Yes, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Um, Sheikh, um, Jazakallah for everything. Um, there's a question that I need, two questions actually. The first one is that, you know when you said, um, before someone said, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Because mm. sometimes you can say subconsciously, if someone say, oh, how are you? But deep down, you know what you meant. Mm. But it doesn't come out that way. Yeah. But, and, and also sometimes you could say, oh, someone say, oh, how are you? Alhamdulillah. You didn't even bother to say Rabbil Alameen. But within yourself, you know what you meant. You have the feeling inside you, but you're not just showing the expression. Mm. Yeah, the action, actually, for them to see that, yes, you meant what you're saying. Mm. Does that mean happy with God or you're not with Allah or you're not um, you don't love a lot much because you didn't actually show the facial expression and you didn't actually show the action for them to for someone that you're, you're reciprocating to see what you're trying to say um, No, what, 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 when I said that I mean generally because not every time you're going to say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen you're going to have to display a mood or a facial expression no, no that's not necessary but what's necessary is when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, as you said, and rightly so, you already recognize Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So when I say sometimes somebody asks you, how are you? You say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, not because only is something we say all the time, mm. but we do understand it. Because as long as you have understand it, it doesn't matter if you repeat it sometimes. Or because we again, I have to say Alhamdulillah, it's something that you say all the time when you eat. For example, if you eat after hunger, when you say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that will settle with you. Why? Because that's on a basis of an experience. You are hungry. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I'm saying. In our actions, when we say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, sometimes it's just going to come like that because it's, it's a way to respond to a linguistic uh, reality. But deep down, all, I've, all I'm, what I'm trying to say is what we say and what we do should not contradict. Okay. If, if you're saying Alhamdulillah when you're responding to someone or when, after you eat it, <coughs> and you're doing the opposite of Alhamd by doing something that violates the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that you're not saying it right. That's, as long as we have a correlation between our actions and our, our, our speech. So what would be the violation? No, the, the correlation means they are they go together. No, you're saying if someone violate, what would be the violation? What would you? I, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, yeah violation by by saying Alhamdulillah, for example, on one hand, and yeah. you're doing something on the other hand. For example, I'll give you an example. For example, uh -huh. uh, uh, a person who uh, doesn't have children. Okay. And then. 
that person is weight, he knows that ch children are only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, he goes to the fortune teller. Uh -huh. So why? Or he goes to so and so whatever to, for, to seek children. That person is violating the word, alhamdulillah. Okay, thank you. Yes. yes. And also, you, well, you oh. talk about um, the impediment of... Um, dua. For, du, du, yeah, or dua. Because, um, uh, alhamdulillah, you mentioned that if someone is eating haram and drinking haram, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ain't going to accept their dua. No. So what are the other impediments that can stop well, someone from... If you're not doing those things, so what else can you be doing for Allah not to accept your dua? Uh, the impediments we know from Allah, from, for example, the dua from the hadith has mentioned if the person is eating haram, and if the dua is, uh, is, is not righteous. For example, mm -hmm. you make dua for somebody uh, on the basis of uh, uh, injustice. Okay. You know what I mean, if, you, if yeah. you make dua against someone unjustly, mm -hmm that dua it won't be responded to. Okay. So these are the, mainly the impediments that we know from the hadith. That is the hadith I've mentioned, that the, the okay. al haram And the, a dua that is unjust. Okay. You cannot do, uh, to pray two rak'ahs and do qiyam al and raise your hand and make dua of a, on a person unjustly. Yeah, yeah naam, there is dua, which is dua al madlum If the person is being mis mistreated unjustly, yeah. And if they, if they raise their hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua. Uh, again, uh, on the other hand of the impediments, there are duas that have particular times, like there are particular times, particular positions, when the dua is accepted, like when we know from the hadith, when the rain is coming down between the iqamah and the dua, all these, uh, the opposite of the impediment. But from the impediments, Allah alam, this is what I know. Okay. This is a beautiful, beautiful session. I enjoyed it. Allow reward. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have next, next we have uh, Ayan Hope, Ayan Hirad. Who is Ayan Hirad? Ayan, can you unmute yourself? Hello, I'm here. Okay. Uh, what's your question? My my question is, I want to find out every time that you go to pick up the Quran to read it, do you have to have do you have to be in a state of wudu? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is, uh, uh, this is, there is a difference between the, the scholars, uh, whether to, to be, they have to be on wudu to, to, to touch the Quran or not. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's an equal difference amongst the scholars because a lot of people who says, uh, the, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون. Some people refer that to the people, to the angels, not to people. So those people who say that you don't have to be in wudu, they give this as a dalil, as a proof. But on the other hand, there is a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu sent, uh, with hadith Mu'ad, I think, to Yemen, that the, that the Quran should not be touched by a person who does not have wudu. But for the, the ulama, what the scholar is saying, for the safe side, for you to come out, whatever there is a khtilaf, a difference of opinion among the scholars, mm -hmm. if the person can come out of the, the differences of the opinion by going or establishing, what's certainly guaranteed, which is to have wudu. Because, to have to out, yeah, if, if, because it's out of respect, you're going to rem remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you're going to mm -hmm. touch the, the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's best to be on wudu okay. of Allah wa ala. Okay. But, just just like yeah. but, uh, sorry, uh, just, there is an exception in this, for example, if there are classes of knowledge, there are school or madrasa, Sometimes children, if they are teaching on a session, a person cannot get up all the time and uh, when they break the wudu to renew the wudu to hold the Quran. For, for a reason of the benefit of the circumstance, for the maslaha or mafsada, means the ease, is alhamdulillah is permissible in that, in that, in that regard. Wallahu uh, a'lam. Alaj Jabi is next. Yes, Alaj Jabi, can you, what's your question? Yeah, it's, uh, assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's regarding the impediments of this uh, making a dua. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody is actually sincere about it, but is still indulging in the, all these haram. Can somebody else make dua on his behalf for him, say for instance, to get the changes he needs? Why well, somebody makes dua for him to get what? Say, like you said, now there are impediments uh, regarding accepting a dua. 
Yeah. The person actually is sincere about making his dua, but is still indulged in this haram, say, for instance, eating haram or wearing haram. So in that case, we have the belief that his dua is not going to be accepted. Can someone else make dua on his behalf, whereby changes would come into this individual's life? But he look, the best thing, like what I know from what I know, is the best, the, the best dua. I mean, yes, the Sahaba used to ask each other to make dua for us, uh, for, for each other. I mean, it's, it's from the deen. And uh, many people, for example, they continue to say, make dua for me. Alhamdulillah, it's from the, but why? Because they, 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 they look at you and they think, oh, you're a person that you can, what they see you in a better position. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's in a better position than others, except with the Sahaba. Umar radiallahu anh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said to him, if you meet this person, ask him to make dua for you because his dua is, is, is accepted. Uh, and he was a tabi'i, uh, al-Qarani. So here we know that the Sahaba used to ask each other. But here, it's a, it's a different situation. You know that you are doing something that is haram, but you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just worried here that we, we, we should not play games with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what I mean? I, I know I'm doing wrong, and my dua is not going to be accepted. I'm going to ask somebody else to intercede for me. That's not the right intercession. Yes? <laughs> so the best thing, personally, wallahu alam, we should not do this thing. Okay, I'm, I'm in the wrong. But the person, if he's sincere and he wants his situation to change, perhaps within himself, because we have to change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يغير الله ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah does not change if, uh, the condition of some people and to change what's in their heart. And if you are in the wrong, as I might be, I'm in the wrong. If I'm in the wrong, what do I have to do? I have to repent sincerely within my own self. I'm not going to say to myself, oh, I'm messed up with Allah, my dua is not accepted. Let me ask that person, he's good with Allah. You don't know who's good with Allah. No. Maybe your dua can be better for you, for Allah to change your condition and to refrain from uh, impeding your dua. Wallahu a'lam.